is up everyone welcome back to my youtube channel today we'll be reacting to nascar's toughest driver i'm looking forward to getting into this video i have no idea who this might be about um so i'm excited but before we get into the video make sure you subscribe over half of you that watch my videos still aren't subscribed just hit the bell it takes two seconds and if you'd like to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks you can also do that by hitting the join button down below this car flipping down the front stretch of daytona is ryan newman He's known by many as Rocket Man for his blazing f Rocket Man, love that. Their maker for his engineering degree at Purdue University, but to and he's got an engineering degree as well. Wow. Of NASCAR due to his incredible resilience in the face of horrible crash after horrible crash. Many of the incidents he was involved in were not even his fault. Oh, hate that for him. For a NASCAR. Look at that damage. And the crash was he always shut up. That's crazy. Stronger. There was so much debris flying everywhere. <laughs> Car's unbreakable driver, Ryan Newman. Yeah, let's get into it. I'm intrigued now. Known for his incredible qualifying skill, it started immediately when he qualified 10th in the race. But in typical Newman luck, tenth. his engine expired before lap 200. In two oh, you kidding. And a more expensive part-time schedule, where he scored his first pole position in only his third ever race, the Coke 600. But as a young, inexperienced driver, barely even 10 laps in, you could probably guess what happened. Be a strong contender all night what happened oh uh, damn that's so heartbreaking his only crash was a hard hit at the pepsi 400 at daytona oh that was a bit of a big impact this time there was no safer barrier it was just a yeah. concrete wall and a that's square so head-on hit like this is one of the most dangerous impacts for a driver of mm -hmm. course newman being the brick wall that he is easily climbed out of the car himself and even went what there he is. That's crazy. Track would be one of the scariest wrecks of the 21st century. Trouble on trouble board. Trouble. Newman slams the wall. Oh, oh no! Newman is he took into the air. Oh my god! The crash completely ripped off his car's rear axle, as well as the yeah. I was gonna say it's completely gone. It made everybody hold their breath as ambulances and stretchers arrived, but the fear didn't last for too. Jeez, you must be terrified if you're like stuck in a car like that. It reminds me of the when when I went to Silverstone in 2022. It was the crash that Joe Grandview had, where his car flew up and landed in between the two barriers, and he was like stuck there. Oh, I can't imagine how terrifying that must have been for him. And like there, you just trapped in the car. By the end of his sophomore year, Ryan Newman had absolutely smashed all expectations, leading mm -hmm. a season of pure domination that was only held back from a championship by his bad luck and mistakes. At Talladega, he lost control and absolutely Whoa. slammed the wall, almost flipping over again. But he instantly got out and quickly and frustrated- Oh, there he is again. <laughs> this man is invincible. Burnsville, then got taken out by Steve Park at Fontana. Oh, what? He's just so unlucky. Oh my god, his, his car is literally on fire. Dale Jr. got him loose and he spun around and crashed. Of course, to mark what? the perfect end to his season, Newman got taken out quickly in the final race. Come on, guys. This is so unfair. Stop crashing into him. <laughs> season these impacts add up, no especially in an era with cars less safe than those of today it's yeah. no easy feat to keep your foot on the gas but that must be scary if you're driving past and you just see a car fly up in the air which is in a single year ever he crashed at texas pocono chicago indianapolis kansas and homestead some crashes were harder than others but a crash at the brickyard 400 stands oh out my the God. most at indianapolis car looks squished and easily reach over 200 miles per hour before entering each yeah that it must be scary for hard crashes but the <gasps> 90 degree angled turns don't help either to make it even worse with newman's crash he was completely turned around had zero control and oh. slammed into the wall with his driver's side door luckily for him this was a safer barrier instead of a concrete wall but it oh still doesn't change how tough his exit from the car was not a single moment yeah, to catch his breath was taken he got out and unhappily tossed it's completely squished 2005 was slightly kinder to newman but he still got caught up in three slightly kinder <laughs> into at talladega then he blew a tire at turn one in pocono which is the hardest corner a driver can crash at in all of nascar then he got taken out in the sharpie 500 of course not a single one of these crashes even came close to injuring ryan and he went on to win in new hampshire after all of these wrecks Aww. 2006 and 2000 at least he's had some wins so <laughs> be heartbreaking if it was just crash after crash and then like no wins on and at the beginning of 2008 pulled off every racer's childhood dream he won daytona Go on. The 2008 season was very tame for Newman. For the first time in his career, he didn't crash out of a single event. But the same couldn't be said about 2009. 
In particular, oh two events that started to truly build <gasps> Newman's reputation for Whoa! Events. He flew again! These incidents occurred at Talladega Super Speedway. Oh, of course they did. <laughs> and had. And would be the start of a trend in which cars somehow made their way on top of Newman on five separate occasions. What? For the win on the last lap of the race. In front of them... That slow-mo was insane. Carl Edwards. And Edwards' car swiftly got airborne and almost like a magnet <gasps> smashed right into Ryan's hood. Despite absolutely... Oh, I think I've seen that clip. Just foot in the gas and finished... He went into the barrier, yeah. ...comment to how indestructible he truly is. Wow, cross the checkered there. ...fighting in the chase for the championship. He had started 7th and led a couple laps over the course of the day, and was looking to improve his 7th place points position when an accordion effect stack-up happened right in front of him and turned him around. Oh no. Oh! Oh, you actually meant turn him around. I thought you meant, like, turn to the side. No. He did a flip, but he slammed into the outside wall while upside down. Nobody's oh prepared my God. for that. He finally came to a stop on his roof, and for the next few minutes, safety workers strained to cut open the car and extract him. When they finally cut open the roof... Oh, they had to cut the roof open. Oh, there he is. He literally dusted himself off and ignored all the safety workers on his way to the ambulance. If you what? This driver in NASCAR, it's gonna. This man is actually invincible. The next season again started rough for Newman, with a head-on collision into the concrete wall on the back stretch during the Daytona 500. But of course, he was completely fine. As oh, the year went on, he got caught up in a couple of big ones at Talladega and Daytona. Oh, he was right in the middle of that one. From being sandwiched <gasps> so hard. The next year, he had an extremely clean season with zero DNFs. He did have a crash. Zero DNFs. That. It's a world record for him, wow. Solidified with a big crash. Whoa, uh, he flipped again. Oh, he landed on top of another car. Kurt Busch got hooked by the 36 car of JJ Yaley, which sent him tumbling and barrel rolling down the center of the track. Most drivers had room to swerve out of the way. Oh, wait, no, he was the car underneath. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's not the 39. Where it stayed for multiple seconds. Not every NASCAR driver can say they flipped a car. Ryan Newman had done that several times by this Several times? Bless. As he seemed to attract this danger much more than any- 2013? <gasps> Absolute Ryan Newman's toughness in 2014. At Watkins Glen, Newman was racing behind Greg Biffle, who got off right. the racing line. He went through the grass, cutting off Ryan as he rejoined the track. <gasps> oh no. ...car into the metal wall at a rapid speed. Metal wall. Oh my god. ...95 car, and by the end of it, the 31- <gasps> That impact was crazy. And completely torn off. Yeah, look at all the debris. He even hit the throttle and tried to drive away. D oh, did he now? Look, I just watched the tire pop off there. And walked to McDowell, who was out of the car on the ground talking with safety workers, to check on him and apologize. Both drivers- Oh, that's nice. But this incident shows the contrast between your average NASCAR driver, who needs to take a moment to collect himself, and Ryan Newman, who chugs along no matter what happens. Yeah, just gets out of upside down cars. Ever. As he worked his way through the new playoff format to finish second overall in the standings come the championship wow. race at Miami. So despite all of his crashes, he was still finishing like high up in the championships and was still getting wins. Really didn't knock him at all. The crash collected several other drivers as Newman would be rear-ended hard and pinned against the fence. Once he was there, the 83 car of Dylan Lupton came back- 23 is on fire. Surprisingly, both Lupton and Newman would be- Oh my god, they literally- piled up there. At Texas, he was running in second place temporarily off a strategy call when his old tires finally gave out heading into turn one. He slammed the wall quite hard, but kept pushing forward for the rest of the season. These kinds of crashes are no joke. They're exactly the types of hits that- The rubber on the tire is so gone. Cushions. So it truly is remarkable how Newman could handle them Whoa. easily. At Talladega, <gasps> Ryan Newman would receive a car on top of him for the fourth time in his career. Fourth time he gets a car on top of him. When for whatever reason, Jamie's left rear tire blew out and he spun around right in front of oh Ryan my. on the straightaway, and his car went airborne right on top of Newman's 31. The flip magnet had struck once again, but at least it wasn't a hard hit for Newman and it was only practice. It looks like so many of these cars are flipping. In 2018, that Newman had a car- I don't know. I want to know when the last time was that a car- Oh my god. ...is no joke and it's not easy to navigate. Ryan- Oh, it was crazy. <gasps> But it really hit him in the face when William Byron lost control right in front of him, slammed the wall hard enough to lift the back tires up, and parked his car on Ryan Newman's hood, marking the fifth time a car had made its way. No way. Both he and Byron were okay after the wreck and continued to push forward. I was going to say, I wonder when 
I want to know when the last time was that a car was airborne. Obviously, it doesn't happen as often now because of the restrictor plates. As the race wound down, tensions rose higher and higher. In the final 20 laps, crash <gasps> after crash happened, and Newman did a great job of evading them. Wow, that was a close call for him there. He Hamlin for the final race. Surprised he didn't get involved in that, knowing he just gets crashed all the time. Else in contention until the final stretch to the finish line. Ryan Blaney made a move to try to steal the win, but Newman blocked oh. it well. Blaney then wow. tried to fall in and push Newman to the win, but instead hooked him in one of the worst crashes. Oh, are you kidding? Flipped multiple times, been slammed in the driver's side window by Corey LaJoy, crossed the finish line ninth, and finally came to a rest upside down, his car spilling fuel with a small fire burning. Everybody was He crossed the line whilst wrecking. Crews began to extract him, and black privacy shields didn't help ease oh. the thoughts of the public. You know it's not good when they do that. And transported to the hospital, where we all eagerly awaited news surrounding his condition. Finally, we got a statement from Roush Fenway Racing, including a picture of Ryan. Oh, oh, I got chills. I'm gonna cry. Soon after, he was released from the hospital. Oh no! A bruised brain. Newman missed a few races after this, but came back after the COVID break to run a full schedule. Although after this crash, Newman never had the same success in the NASCAR Cup Series again, only scoring six more top tens and two more top fives in 73 races, the sheer ability of the man to survive such a horrible wreck and continue racing is tremendous. And it's Yeah. It's not just like one wreck or two or three. So many in there. That was absolutely insane. I didn't know... Um, I've heard of Ryan Newman, but like don't know anything about him. Um, so watching that and seeing how many crashes he actually had there, that was insane. And it's rare, like he said, to have to for a driver to flip over in NASCAR or have um, another car land on top of you. That happened to like hit another car landed on top of him like four times, and he flipped over so many times there. Um, that man just was like so unlucky when it came to crashes. But he also, it wasn't like he was just crashing all the time and wasn't getting any results because he was winning and he was finishing high in the championship standings. And whenever he did crash, he just walked out the bloody car. The man is invincible. Um, so yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that video. So with that being said, if you have any other videos that you'd like me to react to, drop them in the comments. I'm working my way through everybody's suggestions at the moment. If you did want to check out any of my other socials or become a Patreon member and get early access to videos like this, then you can do all of that down below. And if you want to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks, you can also do that by hitting the join button down below. But I hope you enjoyed today's reaction and I will catch you next time for the next one. Bye.